being at my house with my wife actually breaking down the first hour after we brought Charlie home because he was crying and we didn't know what to do. Hey, what up? Yo. All right, man, I'm on my way to interview Taylor Bennett for Rap Dads. Oh, you got Taylor? Yes, sir. Ah, that family, that family, his whole family, Chance, Taylor, his father, Ken, the, the excellent dad. So I'm excited for this. This show is very important to the culture, to get to the community. So I'm excited, man. Awesome. All right. I wanted to check in before I hit out. All right, man. Great job, man. Rap dance, baby. Let's get it. Let's get it. You see my view. Woo! Okay. Taylor Bennett. What up? Welcome to Rap Dads, man. I'm here. You're here, bro. A dad that raps. This is just, this ain't even Rap Dads. This is me being a fan right now. I'm rocking with you. I also don't feel like you guys get enough credit for what you've done for independent Appreciate artists. That, man. And I was so concerned that somebody <laughs> somewhere was going to be like, stop these little stop black these boys. Stop these little dudes. Yeah, I'm rocking with you. And I'm it's so proud rough. and I'm so happy that that has not happened and that you guys have been embraced. Yeah and uh, completely changing the game. Taylor Bennett and his brother Chance the Rapper changed the game in many ways for independent artists. One of the biggest being convincing the Grammy Academy to count a certain amount of streams as equal to an album sold, which then qualified independent albums for Grammy consideration. This is what led to Chance the Rapper's coloring book album winning three Grammys. So you have three kids, correct? Yeah, I got three boys. Okay. Wow. Me too. Oh, wow. That's great. That's Me pretty too. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So how many years apart are they? Mine's uh, are three. three so three, three. I got Charlie. He's four years old. Blake, he just turned three. And then the youngest, Logan, and he's five months. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. I'm sure, you know, as a father of three, it's helpful to have, you know, both of them helping. Oh, Logan for sure. As well. yeah. That's the cheat code for real. If yeah. you're going to double and triple them for up. sure. We got to go back. If yeah. we're going to talk about fatherhood, we're going to talk about right. a rap dad. Yeah. We got to talk about your pop. Definitely, yeah. My your dad. pop has been instrumental, obviously, in your career, in yeah. your brother's career, Very in Obama's so. career, in a lot of people's a career. Lot of people, yeah. So, um, a lot of people call Kim Bennett. <laughs> yeah, man. What was your relationship like growing up with, with your dad? I've always been really close to my dad. Uh, when I was really young, like a baby, I used to get sick at night. I don't know why. I think it was like allergies. We had cats and different things and figuring out. But my dad used to always wake up in like the middle of the night and take me to the hospital and stuff like that. Um, and I still have like memories of sitting at like the top of the stairs in the middle of the night. And he's like holding me and I'm like looking down these wow. stairs. So, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've had an amazing relationship Uh with my dad, you know. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So he was super involved in 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 your school life. Yeah. But it's also well documented that you've said you weren't that yeah. great a student. I wasn't. And then no. your brother, his rap career launched with because 10 of ten <laughs> day suspension. Right? So what was We've that? We've both gotten one before. How did he navigate <laughs> I that? I think I don't feel like my dad ever pushed me and was upset at me based off of my grades. I think my dad would be upset and disappointed based on how much I actually push effort towards. Yeah, the effort. Mm. Um, and also me and my brother and my father, we all had learning disabilities. And me and my brother actually had IEPs, which is like individual educational plans. OK, so it was more about, again, the discipline and the dedication and the pride that you had within your work that right. you would be upset at. But if you try hard and you got that D, we go to Toys R Us sometimes. Wow. Like I had some times where I, you know, really pushed and fought and like my dad would try to do homework with me and he didn't know how to do it. Like I remember that, you know, um, and those different days and stuff like sitting on weekends in the kitchen. And it wasn't super often because I feel like, again, chores were more important than homework to my dad. Not saying that homework wasn't, but like the first thing that he would think is like, how is the upkeep of your house? Like, right. how is, you know, and then also, like, I think, like, manners, like, how you speak and, right. like, those kind of things. School was, everybody does school. Like, you better be doing something in there. Right, You right. know, <laughs> like, yeah. Please welcome my good friend, Esteban Serrano is here, man. Hey! Esteban! 
Listen. And I'm really proud of him for his new book, The Ten Dad Commandments, Fatherhood Through the Lens of Hip Hop. Let's go over some of the commandments. Ooh, let's do it. Commandment number one, know your role. Know your role. What is a father? You cannot fulfill a role that hasn't been defined. Right. Okay. So if you don't know what those responsibilities are, what those tasks that you need to be uh, over are, how you going to do a great job? Commandment All number right. two, watch the company you keep. Fatherhood, especially for me, was a great excuse to evaluate my company and see who was adding value and who wasn't adding value. But also, who do I want to have access to my son? Yeah. Like, uh, commandment number three is protect. The big part of that chapter for me is teaching my sons how to protect their peace. Mm -hmm. uh. That's paramount. This is the big question. Ooh. How has fatherhood changed you as a person? Yeah. I think fatherhood has changed me as a person probably more than a lot of people, yo. Like, for real. Like, and I really mean that. Like, uh... When I had my first son, I stopped eating red meat. I stopped eating pork. I literally, like, dedicated my at least 30% of my time to just working out just all the time. Um, and this is before he was born. Like, when he was born in the hospital, me and my best friend that started our workout fitness training together were doing push-ups in the hospital. I always felt like, again, for me, so funny, but it, it really does come from my dad. Everything has had to do with having children for me, like since I was like a very small kid. And it's always felt like whether it was my career or if it was school, everything was like on this ticking clock. And I only had so much time to execute it, like in the way that I wanted to do it so that I could be in this space that I wanted to be. And like, that's how like I view like a lot of projects and like a lot of. So when I found out I was having this kid, it felt like, oh, my gosh, all of these things are need to change drastically, mm. super fast. So, I mean, of course, like, <clears throat> you know, you're having a child. So then it's like, you know, you start looking at people differently, you know, like you're like, oh, my God, these are just all big ass babies. <laughs> walking around being fucking mean right now and doing fucked up shit like these are Word. babies some big ass babies or just like you know even the idea of like you know how you view yourself like i was like okay now i am a father and i think that the most important thing i found with my first child was balance and it was work it was fitness and it was family mm. and how do you get enough of those things have enough time and still be able to give what you give to everyone else. All of that really came from my kids. And then I think especially like business, like the year that I found out I was having Charlie, my manager moved to New York. That was also my, like one of my best friends that we were the same age. Cause you know, I'm independent and he moved to New York and he started working at a company and our relationship started to change because now he's doing other work. You know, it's kind of like side, you know, hustling like my stuff. He knows I have a kid. So it's like I'm not you get what I'm saying. Yeah, and yeah, it was like yeah. a thing where I was like, damn, I'm gonna have to fire my best friend because I have a family. Right. And then I'm gonna have to figure out really diving into this management shit so I could get my own shit straight. And I did it. And that's what really turned me into the fucking business mogul guy I am today where I'm texting people left and right and you know figuring out shit with the fucking everybody the promoters the fucking <laughs> distributors the everything you get what I'm saying right. like it came from that point and like that that space um and I changed my whole career around and I made so much money that year and the next year and been making money and, but it came from a space where I was like, I have to do this for my family and I don't trust anyone else to take care of my kid. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. that's really where it was. Um, and one thing that my dad is also right about having kids, it gives you a reason to say no to a lot of things that a lot of other people you can say no to, but it's right. like, man, but it's like, no, nah, I can't do that. Like, I, I, I can't do that. You know your what I'm time, saying? Your time, your energy, like, everything is so much more precious and important. Exactly. Even the way that you think about responding based on what you understand that you're accountable for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, for sure, man. Word. It's time to induct a father into the Rap Dads Hall of Fame. And today's inductee is none other than Chance the Rapper. We all know the pains of natural hair, especially for the babies. So Chance took to Twitter to share his recipe 
for a natural hair solution that won't hurt your little baby's head. Part water, argan oil, shea butter, and a wide tooth comb. I know the girl dads are gonna feel this one. Shout out to Chance for the cheat code, and for this reason, among others, we induct him into the Rap Dad Hall of Fame. So what, if anything, have you noticed in your sons that were like flaws of yours that you needed to fix? Yeah. Um, For me, it's laziness. Like mm -hmm. I was no, the laziest like dude. Determined. Like I don't, you know, my big thing is like, I don't know if it's so much of a flaw mm -hmm. as I will say, like my dad always talks about focusing the energy and not breaking it. And I think that it's a very important thing within our community because I think that when you're a child, again, you're very impressionable, but then you also see the world in ways that us as adults have given up a long time ago. So sometimes you might feel like your child is doing the wrong thing or you might feel like they're headed in the wrong direction, but it's like, um, it's like they're there in some way figuring it out for themselves and that you're also watching that happen and you're trusting them through the process to do the right thing. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, I try to let my kids express themselves a lot, you know, like, of course, we're not talking about cursing and like, you know, right, right, right. But like, you know, if they're upset and they, you know, it's like, OK, you could cry. Don't scream. You know what I'm saying? Don't 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 scream, holler, don't throw and break stuff. But like. If you're upset, it's okay to cry. Right. It's like a ball of energy that you're just like playing with every time that you right. connect with them. And it's like, okay, let's not break it. Let's not stop it. Let's not make Brilliant. you feel like it's it's over. But let's move it and try to guide it to a way, you know, without being too controlling and pushing them in a way where they feel like, oh, my God, like, I don't want to do this. You right. Know? No, that's dope. It's it's very interesting and it's very important that you said that because a lot of people in our community, especially for um, guys or people that are raising boys, we don't let them yeah. have those moments where they are expressing themselves. We feel yeah. like the people like they got to be strong and you can't cry and yeah. don't show any emotion. And I think like two to two points because I think to one at that point. This is a great conversation now that we're having is that I saw something where somebody said that they were saying that America wants black men to feel calm enough where they don't have to be aggressive or they don't have to be on hints. So they don't have to be, you know, but at the same time, America is in no way, shape or form that space. And if you were black and if you do look like us, right, you're crazy to not in every single way, always question what the, this society is right, giving right, you right, or right. is telling you, you know what I'm saying? Right. So again, I feel like there's a lot of reasons why in our community we say men or boys shouldn't cry. Mm -hmm. And I think that we are also just very influenced and also an understanding that as the black man in America, you're never in the driver's seat. You know what I'm saying? You could be in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm be the white dude's best friend you ain't driving them over there. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like um so yeah man i just i feel like a lot of it has to go down and it's based in a lot of other things and then of course in society i also think that just as much as men are pushed to be strong aggressive they push girls to not be mm -hmm. that you know like and they you know and all of those different things i don't really believe in like the the invisible shit like that like men shouldn't cry like at all. girls like shouldn't you know play sports and like i don't fuck with that shit i don't believe that shit and i do think that it's created to support the society that we have at hand already so it's like we continue mm -hmm. to weaken ourselves and to be you know subjected right. to you know again and that's why i said it's not even just to our community thing it's everywhere it's like boys don't cry girls don't play sports right like that that's just how america's mindset right. is honestly it's really not even our concept type shit. <laughs> like, That's a great point. Rap Dads, thanks for watching. I know you got some gems from this episode. If so, hit that like button and share your favorite takeaways in the comments. This is just a taste of a much longer conversation you can find on your favorite podcast platforms. 
Tap in with us on social media. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. For fly merch and updates, check out rapdads.com and join the mailing list so you're always up to date. And remember our mantra, what's best for my child wins. God bless you and your family. Peace.